everybody, this is Blossom. So, as you can see, I have another review for you, this time about the John Bauer Tarot. And this one was quite a surprise for me, I wasn't expecting it, it was an unexpected gift, and I'm really glad I have it now. Um, I find this deck very, very special, and that's why I'm going to do this review a little bit differently than I usually do. But um, yeah, I start with the basic information um, nonetheless. So this deck is by Lo Scarabeo. Uh, you get this, this kind of box, um, nothing, nothing special, but you know, it's all right. And you have then a little white book. Uh, more languages like usual with low Scarabeo, so you have about 17 pages in English. So I do have a light problem when doing that in the evening, so uh, I try my best. So you have a bit of information here, but we're going to have a look at it later. So this deck is like many other uh, tarot by Low Scarabeo a bit different. It is not your Rider White Wade Smith clone. Um, it has a very unique voice. It is very special. Uh, it is it is about storytelling, and we can see that with other decks from Low Scarabeo as well, like the Nicoletta Ciccoli tarot or the epic tarot or the tarot of the sweet twilight for example um, they don't follow the exact rules so you will not have your exact meanings and so most of you know uh, this is pre-existing artwork and sometimes you hear uh, the, the opinions which you know absolutely fine that it is forced into the meaning but for me, those stacks really need to uh, to get out of those <laughs> meaning and I meanings of the traditional meanings, and I really appreciate that. I really like when we go a bit further than um, trying to fit it really in. I am happy when it's not so stuck on the Rider Waite Smith uh, meanings. <laughs> Uh, but everybody is different, so this deck is not for you if you are looking for a Rider Waite Smith uh, clone, and it's not for you if you don't want to let it flow freely, and it's not for you if you don't like the artwork, <laughs> obviously. But yeah, other than that, it is a really, really interesting deck, and. Um, yeah, I thought because the deck is so unique and so special and has that special voice, I would just do a walkthrough without talking about the cards. Because for me, when I first saw this, the, the images, and, and not necessarily from the tarot now, but just the John Bauer images and uh, illustrations, um, there are so many memories for me in there. Every image reminds me of a story I was told when I was a child. It reminds me of personal experiences. It reminds me of my own environments I live in, even though I'm not from Sweden, but you know, we have similar landscape uh, partly here. And um, the beings in this deck are so well known to me, all the gnomes and trolls and, and goblins. It is something that is very, very close to my heart. And so I just want to do that walkthrough without me talking. And I just want you to look at the images and see if the deck talks to you or not, if the images talks to you or not. And we're going to do that now. Now, before I start the walkthrough, I just want to mention that this time Low, Low Scarabeo doesn't have any names of it. Normally we have multi-languages and here we just have the numbers and in the minors 
we just have the number and the suit below. But you're gonna see that now. I hope you enjoy.
I hope you enjoyed. Um, so now I want to have a look at the guidebook. And as I said, there is not too much going on. So we have a bit of information about the artist. And we go straight into the card meanings. There's also no spread or what, you know, no, there's no spread. And um, yeah, we have the same amount of information for um, the minor and major arcana. And we always have a little description of what we see and then the meaning. Now I chose a few cards, which may be interesting or not. If you want to know more, if you want to know how the guidebook is written. For example, the High Priestess might be um, sorry, the Empress might be interesting because she is not what we usually know of the Empress, but I, I really love that card. And in the guidebook it says, a woman sits on a rock next to a lake, her feet dangle into the water, creating ripples. A blue bird rests in her hand and she wears a laurel crown over her long red hair. Meanings. Communion with nature. Cultivate peace and harmony with your surroundings. Take care to enjoy the little moments of life. One example here. Uh, if you don't want to know and could just want to be completely intuitive with this stack, please don't watch this. <laughs> then we have the... Hero Hierophant, which I absolutely adore as well. Two children stand before a stone creature engaged in, a, in discussion. They seek to learn what the earth can teach them. Meanings, receiving knowledge from your surroundings, understanding, learning from other sources. Just this. A young boy stands before a hag. She sits on a stone and runs her long hands through her hair. They seem to be conversing over something. Meanings, bring your world into balance. Be fair and kind to others. It is time to make a choice. The hanged person, long locks of yellow hair dangle from a person in a green tree. Standing below is a boy with his arms crossed. There seems to be a connection between the pair. Meanings, looking up brings connections you may not have expected. The situation needs a change of pace taking a sacred break and this reminds me of a song that i really really love and uh, as soon as i saw this card it was uh, yeah i was thinking of it uh start with the swords the ace a large raven sits on a darkened branch below it stands a young child without clothing the child extends their gown out to the bird as a gift meaning start of a new friendship ask for clarity express new ideas I see it very different from, from what, is, uh, what is said in the guidebook um, and yet you can, you, you can go by it, you know, five of swords. A troll hides behind a rock. He stares at a boat off in the ocean. A dagger is at his side. Meanings. Have awareness of your surroundings. The opportunity is right for its success. Plan accordingly. So this is not your typical Five of Swords meaning. Uh, the Seven of Swords may also be interesting. A knight rushes forward on a horseback. The trail is long and troublesome and being done at a dark time. Meanings, act with integ integrity, move with purpose, pursue a correct path. So the King of Swords. A king stares down at another. He gains wisdom from understanding others. Meanings, rise up, speak with authority. Understanding others can provide insights, using knowledge appropriately. Uh, the four of wands may be startling, but I see, you know, the, in the Chicoli tarot, uh, they have a similar approach to, to the four of wands. Two riders sit on a horse as it races through the woods. Somehow one of the riders maintains their seated position near the horses behind, meaning racing towards the destination, homecoming, doing it your way. Uh, the nine of wands that I really, really like. A young boy stands in front of a troll. Her long hair obscures her face and she wears brightly colored clothing. She holds a trinket out to the boy, meaning stressed in the process, 
keep a vigilant watch, finish what you started. And I see this card very much what she gives the boy is the last piece of the puzzle to finish. Or the three of chalices, sorry. Two creatures flank a fair-haired woman as they walk through a dark forest. Are they protecting her from harm? Meanings, feeling a part of a group, gaining traction, feeling deeply connected to what's around. But you can see that in many different ways, right? So the Seven of Cups is interesting as well. The Seven of Chalices. A young boy hides from a horrible creatures that run around him. A hag waves a stick high in the air, screaming words, meanings. Take caution with what you are doing. Prepare for a rough moment. Don't let the daydreams get away from you. Then the two of pentacles. A young maiden stands before two cloaked figures. She holds something in her hands as if it were an offering to them. The cloaked people bow their heads in reverence. Meanings. Time to make a choice. Expansion. Balancing responsibility. And the last example... This, this one started me a little bit. This is the uh, page of pentacles, uh, because just because he's so old looking. Uh, he walks across a cobblestone path, carrying two bags in each hand. He is cloaked and hunched, focus on the task at hand. Meanings, harnessing your talents, be observant. The journey has just begun. So yeah, as you can see, um, some are similar, some differ a bit from your know, traditional tarot, and I think this is really storytelling and um, uh, probably really work well. This deck works well for you know uh, free form readings, which I'm a big fan of lately, and or not to have exact positions but more of an idea of a position if that makes any sense <laughs> uh, however i you know i usually do a, a sample reading at the end of a review so you get a feel for the for the voice of a deck and so i will do this uh, again now too so here you can see the layout for the cards this is a four card spread very quick and short one and I was thinking about it when I got this deck. I took it with me into the forest when my husband and I had a bigger walk. And um, yeah, and I thought about it while we were <laughs> on our little tour. And it's this time of year again where it's cold and you stay inside a lot and um, you do a lot, much more indoor activities. And this is always the time of the year where I feel a little bit far away from the wild. The wild of, you know, the, uh, disconnected to my own untamed self. Because I feel like I'm very much a pussy because it's so cold and I need lots of stuff to go outside. It's, it's not that wild feeling that you usually have. <laughs> um... And yeah, you just don't spend much time in nature. So you may, I, I do always feel a little bit far away from it. Not like completely disconnected, but much further away than usual. So I thought, I put a few cards. <laughs> so the first question here, or the, or the first card is, how to stay connected to the wild in, uh, during the winter month? And there I have temperance. Now, as always, this is a sample reading. I'm not going in depth with those readings and I will use the guidebook just to give you an idea how, what the voice of this deck is. Not necessarily my voice, but the voice of the deck. So for the, um, this, uh, this card in the guidebook, it says, return to the water from which you came slow and deliberate movement find your footing and i really love the image as well because we see him fully emerged in the water uh, but we can also see his feet very very uh, steadily on the ground um, 
you will not be thrown over by a wave. So how to stay connected, what I take from it is keep grounding yourself because that is something that, uh, yeah, I'm missing actually. Yeah, that is so true. I'm actually missing that a little bit. Thank you, tarot cards. <laughs> um, it's just because usually I do my grounding exercises outdoors. Uh, yeah, I really do. I always do them outdoors. Um, yeah, now it's cold. I'm not doing that. <laughs> and uh, you know just fully emerge myself in the wild um, instead of playing it safe and that doesn't have to be hasty or anything but it just i enjoy every second of it well so that's for the first card then the second card i asked the question how can i bring the wild indoors and there we have the page of cups and what it says here in uh, the page of chalices, so what it says here is um, seek out what you desire. Do not let distractions bog you down, which comes afterwards into play with that, which makes really sense, the distractions. So I think how I, I do distract myself a lot during winter time with a lot of studying none of those th none of those things are bad but it keeps me from the connection to the wild i do a lot of studying i do a lot of research those kind of things and i also um watch a lot of movies i pl start playing again on 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 you know playstation wii whatever uh, and, and this is just because, yeah, the, the nights are long. And so I do distract myself instead, you know, instead of going into sacred space and really connect with the wild within. So that is, you know, just pointing this out and really just telling me to look out as the troll here does. To look out for what I want. Then the next card, uh, what to avoid in order to reconnect with my um, with my with a wild. And then we have the Knight of Pentacles. What I see immediately is that again the person here on the horse is distracted. The horse is going somewhere else. But the person on the horse is looking behind and what's happening there. And there seems to be a lack of focus for me in this card now. And then, um, yeah, so I need to avoid that. Stay focused. And then the last card I ask, a message from the Woodland Sprites while I was there sitting. And there I got the High Priestess. And again, we have here the meanings in the little white books. Communion with the divine, shamanistic visions reflecting on the current moment. And this reminds me of a special place for my own environment, this one. And also just the dark, the dark, really embracing that darkness. And um, yeah, the, the, the vulnerability of the naked girl here it, it just it gives me very very much to think about here and um yeah so but as i say uh those readings are always just a quick example just to you know to show you what the guidebook says not so much what i say ah uh, yeah so that's it for this little very quick mini reading. I hope this was helpful. Thank you so, so much for watching. Much love and many blessings. Bye.